Channel 55 with JJ's best newscasters coming at you now with news from Sudan with special guest stars Claudia Kaki, Miriam Abt, Victoria Finklia, Taylor Till, and Sierra Palin. Hi, I'm Finklia and I'm interviewing Taylor Till. Hello, my name is Taylor Till and I'm the environmentalist. Where is the country located? The country is located in the continent of Africa and its climate is 100 degrees Fahrenheit and it's mostly tropical and with rainforests and grasslands and a lot of marshlands. How was the environment impacted by this event? The environment was impacted by this event by the increase of bombage, by bombage in the, in the genocide causing the farmers not to grow their crops on, on the South Kordoff and the Blue Nile River causing the other countries with starvation and no food. Taylor Till and I'll be interviewing Mary Abt. Hi, my name is Harry Abt and I am the historian. What, what, what were some major events in the recent past that led changes to the government? Well, in the 1990s, when the civil war was at its peak, the government got reports in the floor um, of highlands and but they didn't pay any attention to it. And in 2003, which was when it all started, um, the government of Sudan um, reacted by unleashing Arab militia called the John Javid or, or cavils on horsebacks. Over four, 480,000 people died and over 2.8 million fled. Um, on July 9th of 2011, Sudan split into two. According to BBC News, Sudan's government decided to be split into two. South Sudan, where they speak Arabic and English and are mainly Christian and animist, and North Sudan, where they speak mainly Arabic and 70% of their population are Islam. What social groups were involved? The social groups that were involved were the Janjaweed and the Khan Arabs. What government was in place or slash power? The government that was in place was President Omar Hussein al-Bashir, who in 2009 was arrested. The International Criminal Court, or the ICC, caught a warrant against him um, for poor crimes and crimes against humanity, describing the Janjaweed as allies. Hi, I'm Sierra Palin. I'm interviewing Victoria Finklia right now. <laughs> I'm Victoria Finklia, and I'm the geographer. How is the country divided politically, socially, and economically? Um, they were divided into two groups, the Janjaweed, which were Sudan, Sudan Arabs, and they tried to, they committed genocide against um, the non-Arabs. That's interesting. And how were the neighboring countries impacted? Um, increased tension and population in Chad and the Se Central African Republic because of the genocide. Hi, I'm Sierra Pantlin, and I'm the ambassador. What happened to the people that were displaced? Well, displaced means to leave home because of war or persecution, and in this case it was persecution or called genocide. And due to the fact that they were displaced, they were raped, their houses were set on fire, and disease was spread due to the fact that their bodies of dead people were put in the water, so they had to go to another country. And that means 2008 and 1800 were in refugee camps in Chad, which were overcrowded and overcrowded. What about bystanders? Were there upstanders? What did they do? Well, the bystanders were cops and other countries that didn't know what was going on officially. And then the upstanders were this, there was a teen protest in Chicago, and by one of the leading advocates was a student named Farid, and he was in the Chicago region, for, and he was one of the leading advocates for stopping genocide and defer by holding campaigns that raised $16,000 and 80% went to Eastern schools in Chad, and 20% went to community centers, and they also sold shirts saying, Save Defer. What policies were put in place that could have been contributed to the genocide? Well, before, there was an internal struggle in 2001 between the government and an idealistic leader who was making peace attempts with Sudan people and Liberation Army and they arrested him. And then in 2001, hunger and famine in Sudan affected eight million people. 
What policies were put in place after the event? Um, there was a Peace and Accountability Act of 2003, but there still continues to be murders today um, because the government won't fully put any interest into stopping these murders, so there's still people in refugee camps, so nothing has really been done to try and stop the genocide. I'm interviewing Claudia Kecky. Hi, I'm Claudia Kecky, and I'm the economist. Um, so tell me, what was the economy like before and after this event? The economy for Sudan of the figure for 1998 is 42.8 billion diamonds, which is the currency in Sudan, or roughly 100. 70 million at the time. For 1999, the figure is 62.2 billion dollars, or roughly 250 million. And for 2000, the government of Sudan figure indicated is 84.1 billion dollars, or roughly 340 million dollars. The military budget doubled in that time between the year before oil revenues began to flow and the year following the start of oil revenue income. What resources were involved and why? The resources that were involved are, according to the article, is but a current, current financing of genocide in Sudan derives chiefly from oil revenues that began to flow in August 1999. These revenues now exceed $2 billion per year, according to the estimate of a well-informed Sudan oil analyst. What is not sufficiently recognized is that for several, several years before the first export shipment of crude oil left for Sudan, Haru had been engaged in substantial in-time trading with China. Future oil and anticipated oil revenues in exchange for Chinese arms, especially tanks, but also combat air of armored personal carriers and substantial medium-sized weaponry. China was also the primary supplier of small arms. The long-term costs were that 200,000 to 400,000 people were killed. And what were the long-term benefits to the country? The long-term benefits were that in July of 2011, South Sudan became the newest country, and it was a big step for civilians ending violence, but they still so we're going to be wondering how to stop genocide from happening in your community. And it can be as simple as just not following the lead of someone who wants to hurt others. There's a pyramid of genocide that continues to occur, and if you report these acts, then you can just simply stop it. It starts at prejudicial attitudes, acts of prejudice, discrimination, violence, and then genocide. If you ever see one of these, then report it to your local police station or to the government or to anyone who you think can help stop this. Thank you for joining us. We hope you learned something out of our presentation. We're glad to have you as viewers. Don't let genocide happen again. This is Channel 55, JGA's Best Newscasters. Over and out! Victoria! <laughs> 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 I like McChicken. <laughs> I know, I know, Paul, Paul. <laughs>